Welcome to Community On Demand. We are so excited that you're joining us today. Don't forget that you can join us for one of our live or online services at 9.30 and 11 a.m. every right. Sunday. You don't want to miss out. And don't forget about our pre-party just 10 minutes before each service. If it's your first time today, we want to say welcome. Wow. We're excited that you're here. Thank you for tuning in. You don't want to miss out and we want to connect with you. So all you need to do is text the word connect to the church phone number here on the screen and someone from our team will be in touch with you. So good. Well, as you know, we are in the middle of Advent season. What is Advent? Well, every single week, we are gonna be celebrating the greatest gift that we've ever received, which is the gift of Jesus Christ. But in addition to that, we're gonna be hearing some awesome transformative stories from people right here in our own church. In fact, we have an awesome short video for you to watch right now. I'm Christine Mills, and I work at Virginia Academy. I'm Andrew. I'm the luckiest man in the world to have her married me. Over the last six years, God has really shown us how real He is. We have packed in a lifetime of struggles during those years, and God has been faithful and true the entire way, even when we didn't understand it. Four years ago, Christine was wheeled into the ER after fighting acute lymphoblastic leukemia for the last 15 months and was on her second reoccurrence. Due to a raging infection in her body, she quickly went into septic shock and needed multiple blood transfusions and eventually fell into a comatose state for nine days. For Andrew, those nine days were some of the most challenging experiences that he's ever had. But God spoke to him and gave him assurance that I would wake up even when the doctors had no hope. When Christine woke up, there was no leukemia in her body. However, she was paralyzed from the neck down. She spent the next seven months learning to walk again and getting strong enough to have her bone marrow transplant. We spent that entire Christmas season of 2016 in the hospital, which was extremely isolating. I was dependent on nurses to attend to every basic need. As the world was getting ready for the holiday season, our Christmas was completely stripped down to the only thing that truly mattered, Jesus. In that tiny hospital room, we felt Jesus in a way that we have never experienced before. We truly witnessed a miracle with Christine waking up in that Advent season of 2016, and it has impacted us every single day since. Christmas has never been the same since that December. As we light this Advent candle, we pray that the light of hope will be lit in your hearts as well. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. What a powerful, powerful story that was. Right. Thank you, Andrew and Christine, for sharing your story with us. In just a moment, we're gonna get to hear an encouraging message from our very own Pastor Charlie, and we are a note-taking church. So to follow along with us, you can text the word APP to 571-209-5000 to follow along and take some notes along the way. Listen, if at any point during today's service, you want prayer or you need to reach out to somebody for anything, you can text the word CONNECT to our church phone number and someone from our team will be in touch with you. We're going to get started here in just a moment, so enjoy today's service. Well, good morning, Community Church. Thanks for tuning in, and I want to just pause right now and welcome our studio audience. Good to see you guys. Let me put your hands together. Let's welcome all those who are, come on guys, put your hands together. Thank you for being here in our live service. 
We know that, uh, that most of you are not yet comfortable with uh, coming to the physical service, and we just want to stop and recognize you and thank you for tuning in and being a part of our church family, community church. We are a, what are we? We are a no, now hold on now, some of you are sitting on the same couch, so that must mean that you are in the same household, right? Keeping our distance, well, you two back there as well. So we are a what? Let's try it again. We are a what? So do you have your notes? Everyone, everyone pull out your notes if you would. If you're online, I want you to, you say, Pastor Charlie, how can I get my notes? Well, you got to go to our app, download the app. We fill in the blanks every single Sunday. Today, we're talking about how to celebrate. Look at your notes. Say this title with me. How to celebrate, how to celebrate Christmas. By the way, for those who are tuning in, uh, online, we are going to be celebrating communion together at the at the end of the service. So, if you want to sometime find some bread and some juice, and we're going to celebrate communion at the end at the end of the service. So, how how do we celebrate Christmas? I'm going to ask four questions, and then I'm going to give two suggestions at the very end. You guys doing all right? Smile. Let me see you smile. Make sure we're doing. You guys I'm like? Oh my goodness, we're on camera. <laughs> You look nice, okay? You look all right. So we're going to read a rather lengthy passage of Scripture. It's there in your notes. It's going to be on the TV screens for those at home. When you just read, I want you to read God's Word out loud. John is here giving us Christmas 101. These are the basics, okay? It's rather long, but, but track with me here. Let's read together. First John, starting in chapter 3, verse 4. Everyone who sins is breaking God's law. No, wait a second. I thought we were talking about Christmas. Well, we are. This, this is according to John. These are the basics of Christmas. Everyone, let's keep going. Everyone who sins is breaking God's law. For all sin is contrary to the law of God. And you know that Jesus came to take away our sins. And there is no, what? There is no sin in him. Verse 6, now we're a thinking church. So wherever you are, I want us to be engaged with the word here. Look at verse 6. Anyone who continues to live in him will not sin, but anyone who keeps on sinning does not know him or, or even understand who he is. Everyone say, wow. Wow. Just, just okay. That's, that's kind of deep. Now, there is a word that's being mentioned over and over and over again. I, I meant to say that at the beginning. I want you to try to pick out what this word, just repeat it over and over. Let's keep going. Verse 7, dear children, don't let anyone deceive you about this. When people do what is right, it shows they are righteous even as Christ is righteous. But when people keep on sinning, it shows that they belong to the devil who has been sinning since the beginning. But the Son of God came to destroy the works. I might underline that in my notes or in my Bible. I'm hearing you guys read nice, nice and well. I hope those who are physically in the service, you're reading out loud as well. Uh, verse, verse 9, those who have been born into God's family do not make a practice of sinning because God's life is in them. So they, in reality, they can't keep on sinning because they are children of God. Verse 10, so now we can tell who are the children of God and who are the children of, very interesting, how in the world? Now, this is the scriptures, this isn't Pastor Charlie, this is, this is John, he's saying we can tell who the children of God are and who the children of the devil are. Let's keep going. Anyone who does not live righteously and does not love others does not belong to God. Did you catch the word that was repeated over and over? At least, I counted 10 times, the word sin is repeated over and over again. Now, this is Christianity. You read Christianity 101. We could say this is Christmas uh, 101. Here's the insight just as we begin. We cannot properly celebrate or even begin to understand Christmas without an understanding of this one word. What is that one word? It's the word. Get ready for it. You're going to, I knew it. I knew it. I came to church and they're talking about this word sin without an understanding of the word sin. 
in reality, we can't comprehend Christ, what he came, the reason he came. We can't understand anything uh, truly about Christmas without a proper understanding of this one word. Let's begin our four questions. Question number one, okay, so what is sin? Thank you for asking that question. Here's the answer. Fill in the blank. Sin, number one, sins are all attitudes. Come on, say attitudes. attitudes. Are all attitudes or actions. Say attitudes or what? Actions that go against what God wants. Sins. Sins. All attitudes, not just actions, but attitudes that go against the thing that God wants. Wants. Now, notice very carefully, I might, I might circle the word what God wants because um, I don't know if you guys have found this. We have a proclivity to add and subtract things from what God wants. Now, if we could literally, if we could stop and we could go down history and we could do a history course in the church, uh, our own history is littered with us adding things and subtracting things from what God really wants. I was just thinking of, uh, of one example because it's Christmas time. You know, in England, there was, a, there was a part of the church that actually outlawed Christmas. And you could go to jail for baking a pie on December 25th. That's real. That's a part of our history. Now, we could, we could go on and on and on when the church adds or subtracts things. I'm thinking of my own grandpa. My grandpa went to a church where you, your hair had to be a certain length. And if, if you're a guy, you wore your hair like this. Uh, the women uh, couldn't wear jewelry, couldn't wear makeup. Now, we just thank God that those times have changed, yeah. <laughs> did you? <laughs> so, those uh, uh, jewelry, uh, makeup. Uh, I remember grandpa telling me you, you couldn't drink a, a Coke. And so he would go in his house and pull down the blinds and get a Coke and drink it to make sure no Christians saw him drinking some, uh, you know, Coke, couldn't go to the movies, couldn't dance. You know, we, come on, let's own this. So I just want to just stop here and say that no man, no denomination, no church, no pastor, no pope has the authority to make things right or wrong. That authority lies with one. Now, when I say right or wrong, what do I mean by that? I mean, no man has the authority to make something righteous or unrighteous. This comes from, this comes from God, even though we have a tendency to, 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 and before we pick on others, we still have that tendency today, by the way. You say, well, hopefully you're think we're a thinking church, so you're going, well, where in the world do we find out? Well, that's another whole message. Thank God we get to do this regularly. But I just want to read one scripture, this is 2 Timothy 3.16. I think it's there in your notes. Let's read it out loud. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our... You can put wrong in our lives. You can put the word sin. It helps us to see what is sinful. What is, what's that wrong attitude? What's that wrong action, behavior? Let's keep reading. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. Now, I'm going to suggest something to you. In God's eyes, what was righteous or what was right in the first century is still right and righteous today. Um, let's back up even further. In God's eyes, we could back up all the way to uh, 1444 B.C. You're scratching your head going, what in the world happened 1444 B.C.? Uh, well, that's when uh, Moses, the children of Israel, camped on the base of the Mount Sinai, and God came. You, you know, God gave, gave him the Ten Commandments. Now, in God's eyes, those things have not changed. What are you talking about, Pastor? I've never heard. Uh, you shall have no other gods beside me, before me, or close to me. I'm the only one. You're not to make an image like me to bow down and worship that image. Um... Don't take my name 
in vain. Remember the Sabbath day. Make sure you keep it holy. Six days you can work. I, I created the world in six days, but always take one day and stop and remember me. Honor, I want you to remember this, honor your father and your mother that your days may be long upon the land which I'm going to give you and remember not to steal and kill and bear false witness against your neighbor. Thou shalt not, son, daughter, covet anything that's not yours or that's your neighbor's or someone else. That's, that's, that's not for you. You see, righteousness in God's eyes is still righteousness. Come on. Come on today. I'm reasoning with you. I'm just reasoning with you. I'm just reasoning. I want you to reason with me. So we're understanding Christmas. What is sin? Okay, we, I, I got, I'm starting to get an idea what, what sin is. So question number two, question number two. Some of you are doing the math, trying to figure out when this is going to be over. I got it now. It's four, four questions. Question number two, what is the big deal? Come on, say the question with me. What is the big deal about sin? Let's go back to verse six. I'm pulling everything from what we just read from John Verse 6 says, anyone who keeps on sinning does not know him or understand who, who he is. In other words, if, I, if I'm, my practice is, this is the habit of my life, I'm, gonna, I'm giving myself to sinning, then we really don't understand Christ, who he is, what he came to do. What's the big deal? The big deal is, we could talk a lot about this, but just simply in your notes, sin and God are incompatible. They just, they just don't go uh, together. Sin separates us from God both now and for eternity. Do you remember, when you think of being incompatible, do you remember getting the new iPhone and then trying to plug your old headphones, your old ear, earbuds or whatever, into the new iPhone. Come on, do you remember that? And then, yeah, then they give you a new charger. I just brought a pair. It just stayed tangled up. Thank God for the wireless things. You, you remember this thing right here. But you used to be able to, you got that online? You see that right there? This thing drove me crazy. Oh, this is ancient. Yes, this is ancient. Got my new iPhone. Let me listen to my cool music and everything. Put my headphones in. And then you go try to plug it in. And then, <laughs> where is it? That's right. There is no place to, to plug it. It's not compatible. And when the first man, according to Scripture, Adam and Eve, they had this compatibility with God, fellowship with him, relationship with him. They were in the Garden of Eden. But when the devil came, that great serpent of old, our enemy, enticed them to sin, to go against what God had instructed them to do. And we know the story. We've been to Sunday school. They fell, and sin entered the human condition, the human heart. And sin in God, no matter how I try, I can't connect. It's just incompatible. God has some things he wants to say to us. He has some things we need to experience. If we think experience an iPhone is wonderful, all these things, just imagine being connected to God. To God. Now, obviously your notes, according to Scripture, we, we all have a serious problem. Why? It's because we all, we all are sinners. We all, all of us are in this, Pastor Charlie, everybody, we're in this same boat. Romans 3, 10, there's none righteous. There's not, no, not one. 1 John 1, 18. Read it with me if you would. If we claim we don't have any sin, we are only what? Fooling ourselves and not living in, in the truth. So this incompatibility. So, why did Jesus come? Question number three. Why did Jesus come? By the way, I, I want to. 
I could just stop right here. Well, the number one why reason why Jesus come was came was because of God the Father. Let's not miss that. Let's not miss that. God so what? Loved the world that he did something. This is all coming from God our Father. God so loved, someone needs to hear that. The Father, you hear a lot about Jesus, you might, but the Father so loves you that he sent his Son that whoever puts their trust and confidence in him will not perish but have so much life that it bubbles over into everlasting life. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be connected back, might be saved with all the promises and blessings and richness there is. So let's go back to why did Jesus come? Now let's, let's read what scripture, what John said, 1 John 3, 5, and you know, that Jesus came. Come on, come on. You didn't get it. Let's, let's read it again. And you know that Jesus came to what? To take away our sins, and there is no sin in him. Now, Jesus wasn't a part of the problem. If he was a sinner, then he would need somebody to save him. We're, we're the sinners, and he came to save us from our sins. Look at And the Son of God came. Look at verse 8. The Son of God came to what? To destroy the works of the devil. So Jesus came to do something that we could not do ourselves. So came to take away our sins. Uh, then Apple created this little thing here. Anybody have one of these? You, you have to just, they hook you and you keep buying more and more stuff. So no, no matter how hard I try, no matter how many other spiritualities I try, no matter religions I try, materialism I try, other Christmases I try, God, God sent a Savior that takes away our sin, our incompatibility. He removes it as far as the east is from the west. And in him, I, I receive this ability. See that? I, and then I can, through Christ, you hear me? Through Christ, I connect with God, my Father, God Almighty, with all the riches and privileges and all the inheritance that comes with that. I become a child, a son and a daughter of the king. Now, here, here the answer, I'm sorry, I didn't get the fill in the blank. Some of you are like, give me the fill in the blank. Give me the question number three. Why did Jesus come? Jesus came. I'm just pulling this right from Scripture. He came to destroy, come on, say destroy. Destroy, destroy the devil's works. He begins with taking away sin. Now, when sin came in, you know what came behind sin? Sin never just stops with sin. Listen to me. Sin always corrupts everything. And once we let it in, it just begins to, if you compromise with it, do a little bit, it always, it won't stay there. It, it moves and corrupts everything. So sin comes in right behind sin. Death comes in. And just everything we see that's wrong in this world, just remember, this isn't the world that God created originally. But sin came in. And it's been, been, been corrupting. So Jesus came to, read it with me. Do you, do you believe this? He came to what? Destroy, you're like, some of you hesitating. You don't say the wrong answer. The scripture said he came to what? Destroy the works of the devil. Now think about that. This has been 2,000 years now. We're celebrating Christmas. Jesus came. Now was he successful or not? That was his mission. If that was his mission, I want to ask you a serious question. Was he successful? I mean, he didn't come to make a treaty. I know, devil, everything that's wrong and corrupt and, and everything that keeps people uh, from alienated from God, Jesus didn't come to say, you know, let's, let's just come to a deal. No, not an agreement. He came to defeat him. And yet, here's the crazy thing, there are people going around today, even though Satan has been defeated, he's a defeated foe, there are still people going around who are separated from God. Yes. Yes. 
still oppressed. Oppressed by who? Powers of darkness. Still enslaved. Still without the knowledge that Jesus has come. They're still living without hope. Still living without strength. Still living without that purpose that comes when I'm when I'm brought back into connection with God through through who? Through the one who takes away the sins of the world. So John the Baptist, when he saw Jesus come, he said, "Look, the one who takes away the sin. What, what does that mean, Pastor? The one who takes away the incompatibility." I can be reunited to God, and I can have peace with God through, through Christ. There is a name. Listen, someone's listening. Someone's listening right now. Someone's in the service. So you're lifting. Listen to me. There is a name that is above every other name. There's a name that's been highly exalted. All you have to do is call on his name, and he breaks the powers of darkness over our lives. Your sins can be taken away. How does that happen? My, my guilty conscience can be cleansed. How? In Jesus' name. Death, the power of uncertainty about my future can be taken away. How? In Christ. I don't die like everybody else dies. I die with an everlasting hope that when I die, I live with him. Death where is your victory? Sin, where is your sting? You've been swallowed up in Christ. Christ came to destroy. Destroy. Someone out there doesn't know he has been destroyed. He's a defeated foe. You do not have to live apart, far from God. Oh, praise the Lord. Or without the resources and all the promises that there are in, in him. Oh, thank you, God the Father, for the gift of Jesus in him. I'm speaking to somebody right now. In him, there can be a brand new beginning. Anytime he's invited into a life, a family, a situation, a business, I don't care what it is, it's a brand, fresh, brand new beginning in him. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Question number four. I, I don't feel like going to question number four, but we'll go on, okay? Question number four. Read it with me. What? How do we know if we are part? How do I know if this is working for me? How do I know if I've been a, adopted? I'm a part of the family of God, Pastor. I'm really not sure. I know some of, some of us are going to answer it like this. You, you say the prayer. That's how you know. Well, I love that we should say prayers. A lot of times our walk with God begins with a simple prayer. Lord, save me. That's not very complicated, is it? Lord, save me. Forgive me. I'm coming back home. I turn back to you. But I want to look at what John, how John answers this question. Dear children, look, look, at, look at verse 7. Let's, we're going back to the same scripture. Can we read it together? Dear children, don't let anyone deceive. Now, why would he write that? Because there's a possibility that the, the, the church he was talking to, there were people who were deceived. And let's not distance ourselves. We could be deceived as well. So he said, make sure you're not, you don't get deceived about this. Look, when people keep on sinning, it shows who has been sinning since the beginning. But the Son of God came to what? Destroy the works of the devil. Those who have been born into... Let's stop right there. Stop right there. I might circle that. Those who have been what? Born in... Listen, just because you were born once, a natural birth, that's wonderful. You're a part of the family of mankind. But, but there needs to be a new birth... We're talking about Pastor Charlie. By the Spirit of God and through Christ, I'm born into the family of God. Look what it says about those who are born into the family of God. Verse 9. Those who have been born into God's family do not make a practice of sinning. Why? Because now the literal here is the, the very seed of God. What, what is that? The very Spirit of God 
when a person's born into the family of God, comes and resides on the inside of them, and they have, listen to me, they have a brand new nature. I once was dead to God and the things of God, but now I have different, God has changed my desires. My whole nature, my makeup is, is different. Now I have, a, I have a proclivity. I want, there it is, I want to please the Lord. His life is living on the inside of me. Look, so that God's life is on the inside of them. Let's keep reading. So that they can't keep on sinning because they are children of the God, uh, children of God. And he goes, this is how we know the difference between the sons of God and the sons of the sons of the devil. So back to that question. How do we know? Pastor, I want to know if I'm a part of the, I don't want to be deceived. Lord, I pray that at the close of this service, no one's going to be deceived. How do I know? Well, I want to unpack this a little bit, but we know by examining how we respond to the existence. Here's that word again. We just keep talking about it. I'm sorry, but we, we, we know by how we respond to the existence of sin in our lives. Now, what do you... In other words, when I've done something wrong, and not just go back to what sin is. When I have a, a, a bad, I have the wrong attitude. That I didn't have the attitude that God wanted me to have. I just can't ignore it. Do you hear me? This is how we know. I just can't, I just can't go on with life. I've got to. Something inside of me is working. What's that? It's the seed of God, the spirit of God. I, I, I just feel my, it's conviction, yes. I, I've got to make it right. There it is. I just can't keep on. Uh, when, I, when I'm not doing something that I know God wants me to do, it bothers me. I'm not going to be satisfied, there it is, until I do it. Why? It's evidence. It's a sign. You know why? Because you're a child. You're a child of God. Jill and I were in the... I wasn't with her, but she was driving down the road, and she had a couple kids in the car, and I called her, and I was driving somewhere else, and we're going back and forth, and I'm talking to her, and I, I know she has me on the, the, uh, the, the car phone so everybody can hear, and we're going back and forth, and it gets a little heated. I know nobody gets, has heated conversations <laughs> in your marriages, but um, anyways, it's getting a little heated, and I, I don't know where this come from because this didn't come from me. But these words came out of my mouth, and um, I said, uh, "I said, uh, well, aren't you being a little smarty pants?" Now that's Pastor Charlie's version of cussing. I mean, that is that is like, you know, gloves are off. I'm just kidding, but aren't you being a little smarty pants? And then she goes, "I'm not being smarty pants." And then that's how the fight really got started. No, but we talked a little bit more. And I said, well, okay, bye. Just kind of an abrupt bye, and I hung up. And I'm driving down the road, and n not an hour, not a day later, immediately, I start just role-playing in my head, smarty pants. You think you are, smarty pants. <laughs> and then I felt the voice, you guys aren't getting this. Because I'm a child of God. I'm connected into something different. And he starts speaking to me. By the way, he always doesn't, he doesn't just say things that I want to hear. This is a real God we're talking about. A God that, whoo, power, strength, life, clarity. Oh God, good things. He's able. So I'm listening and he's... <laughs> Who do you think you are? I said, Lord, I found myself, Lord. Immediately, I called on the phone. I said, got Joan on the phone. She said, yeah. Plus, I was thinking, my kids are listening to how I just responded to my wife. And that's not how a Christian, it's not how a child of God, that's not the behavior, attitude, and actions. It's pleasing to the Lord. I said, honey, 
I don't even know what I was thinking. I called you smarty pants. I've never done that before. She started laughing a little bit. And I said, I'm sorry. It's no big deal. Don't even worry about it. I wasn't even thinking about it. I said, no, I want you to know I'm sorry. And we hung up and went on. How are you going to know? Now that's, you say, that's just being smart, Merit. No, no. Yes, it is that. It is that, but it's... Yes, that's how you get the 21 years. But I've heard my dad say it like this. I've been ruined for sin. I, I make a miserable sinner because I just, it goes against my conscience, everything in me, and I, and I can't live until I, Lord, until I, until I, get, it, until I get it right. I get it right. I had, um, oh, we're out of time. I'll tell you another story. But Okay, all this way, all this way, for two suggestions on how to really celebrate Christmas. You ready? It's going to be so deep, so deep. Number one is if you've never invited Christ into your life, into your heart, today. Today, do it. Receive the gift of God in Christ. Pastor, what am I receiving? I'm receiving the benefits of what Christ has done for me. He has defeated the devil. Done something for me I couldn't do, and he took away my sins. So I stand before God clean and a child of God. Is that you? Are you far from God today? Have you never really invited him in? I just want to pause right now before we close this broadcast and give everyone under the sound of my voice right now to receive the benefits of what Christ has done for them. Come on, let's, let's just pray right now, wherever you are. Just close your eyes. If you're driving, keep your eyes open. Other than that, everyone can close their eyes. Lord, I thank you for today. I thank you that you're a savior. Lord, you are not a distant help. You're a very present help. And there's new beginnings in you. Lord, for that person who's calling out to you right now, the miracle of salvation. In Jesus' name, the washing away of our sins. Lord, grant repentance unto life. You might just pray this, Lord, forgive me my sins. Forgive me. Come and live and reign and rule in my life. I surrender today. In Jesus' name. Come on, in Jesus' name. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. If that's you, you you're praying that prayer. You're, you're online. I want you to, to tap the, the uplifted hand there. If you're listening on the, the church online platform or YouTube or, or Facebook, you can just type in the subject line, coming home today. We'd love to reach out to you. Better yet, you can text, always text the word connect to our church phone number, 571-209-5000. <laughs> And we would love to connect with you. Giving your heart to the Lord, number two. But let me suggest this right on the heels of how to celebrate Christmas is if there's anything, any sin that has gotten between you and the Lord, I'm, I'm asking you right now, honor the Lord. Celebrate Christmas. How can I do that? Confess it and forsake it. God has better things for you. He wants you to be close, close to him. Look what Isaiah will close with this, Isaiah 59, verse 1. Don't think that the Lord is too weak. I stop right there. Some of us have been thinking, I, where's God? Where is he? Listen, <laughs> he's a prayer away. Sometimes we just get so, listen to his voice. If there's something there that's, Blocking that relationship, confess it, forsake it, turn away. Don't think that the Lord, come on, read there. Don't think the Lord is too weak to save you or too deaf to hear your call for help. It is because of your sins that he, he's unable to hear you. It is your sins that separate you from God when you are trying to worship him. Pastor, how can I do that? You come to Christ again. You come to Christ. He is the one who takes away our sin. Amen. Amen. Well, this is uh
communion Sunday we celebrate. If you're online, I want you to grab bread. Um, grab some juice there. And I need a communion. So do you have one I can borrow? Someone have one I can borrow? Pastor Alain, you, you got something? Alain, come on, come on, come on, come over. Thank you. You had your chance to be on live. For those that are here physically, you, you first tear that see-through part off, take the bread, and then tear the aluminum off there. If you get the order wrong, stop trying to wrestle it. Just raise your hand and get a new one. You'll never get it open. What is communion? It's just simply, I'm remembering where my help comes from, where my strength comes from, where my compatibility with God. This is all, Lord, you get all the credit. Jesus said, when you do this, remember me. That's the most important thing we can do right now is remember, remember, the, remember the Lord. We're not redeemed with silver and gold but we're redeemed with the precious blood. It's already been paid. I don't have to pay it. I don't have, some of us have been trying to pay it. You don't have to pay it. You receive Christ. He sets you free. Well, let's take the bread and lift it high together. On the night our Lord was betrayed, he took bread and he blessed it. He said, this is my body. It's broken for you. Take it and eat it all. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, let's take the, the cup, the wine. We, we lift it high together. On the same night he was betrayed, he, he took the cup. He said, this is the cup of blessing. Lord, I just pray right now that as we partake of this by faith, it would be a cup of blessing. Lord, help us to move from where we are to where you want us to be, not by our own strength, but Lord, us, us receiving your strength, Lord, in our lives. He said, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for the remission of sins. Take it and drink it all. Come on, before we leave this moment, can we say the Lord's Prayer together? The disciples came to the Lord and said, Lord, would you teach us to pray? And he said, when you pray, pray like this. Let's, let's say it together. Our Father, who art in heaven, oh, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth just as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, all the power, all the glory. World without end, Lord. May you receive the praise in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Hey, listen, thanks for tuning in. And remember what has always been does not have to always be in Jesus' name. Come on, let's get my hand up again. What a great message that was from Pastor Charlie. Look, if you are ready to take your next step, or maybe today is the day that you have committed to follow Christ, maybe you clicked the hand icon with Church Online. We don't want you to leave this service without praying with somebody, connecting with somebody from our Hope team. So all you need to do is text that word CONNECT to 571-209-5000, and someone from our Hope team will be in touch with you. Look, we just want to take a moment and thank each and every one of you for your generosity, especially throughout this season. We have been able to bless and help so many people, and we just want to say thank you. Look, if you want to partner with us today financially, the easiest way to do that is to text the word GIVE to our church number right here on 
the screen. Look, we cannot wait to see you again next week uh, online or in person. We gather at 9.30 and 11 a.m. Make sure you invite your friends and family and you show up 10 minutes early for the pre-party. We'll see you there.